calling our pre-commission meeting to order 8.04 a.m. Again, Happy New Year to everyone I haven't seen this year. Hope you had a good Christmas and New Year celebration. All right, uh, consent agenda. Does anyone have any questions about that? Really just the approval or any questions about the minutes? Any corrections to the minutes? Updates from those? Okay. And any questions about the appointment of Mr. Gary Freeman to replace Chris Foreman as chairman of the Community Services Board? Right. And then we'll have the final reading of Ordinance 1164, which is amending the chapter 14 of the City Code's Ordinance relating to the Builder Building Contract Examining mm -hmm. Board. Uh, no city attorneys have talked about that before. Yeah, and I thought we were. Yeah, I think we were trying to get it done in December, but the advertisement didn't get in or something. So it's the same one we talked about. Just changing the duties of that board. All right. Any questions for that? No questions. All right, and then we have uh, some new business discussion of possible approval uh, to remove the subterfuge <coughs> from the wastewater treatment plant. It's about 50, it's going to be fifty-five thousand uh, to get that repaired. Uh, any questions in regards to that? I think Chris is on the line to explain this and everybody will know what it is. Okay. Chris, you're good, good morning. Good morning. Were there, there any questions? questions? Um, I think really my only question is I see that uh, in the overview it talks about the reasoning for not having to put it out to bid to other companies. Um, so. I just wanted to confirm with the lawyer that that's okay. Is it? That's who is the only one that makes that product. Yeah, sole source. Okay. All right. Any other questions on uh, number eleven? Also, we could also use it practical because they actually literally, literally have to take it apart and put it back together again. I think that's part of it as well. Chris, you're breaking up, but we talked about impractical when our um, purchasing policy, when something is impractical, then um, you can't put it out to bid or do quotes because every company is going to have to do take it apart, put it back together again to give you a quote, and that's impractical. That's in a purchasing policy. <laughs> <clears throat> so when it's replaced, it should save us some money because we don't have to haul as much sludge out? That is correct. Because we use it to cake. Cake. Right. Yeah, I think this will pay for itself pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. right, any other questions on number 11? All right, any questions on number 12? <clears throat> so if I read it properly, we can opt out at whenever we want, essentially. If we do it annual, like it says annual for four years. It's an annual payment. Um, I like the idea. Right. So I, I like the idea. I like since we have the opt out in there that we can opt out after one year if we don't like it. It makes sense because based on the overview of how we've never had the the roads graded, I think that that's very important to have because, um, I mean, just an example too would be like the ditches, the roads, all that stuff. If it's not graded properly, we're already having issues with stormwater. So even something like stormwater itself or driving on roads, we need to know what those grades are. So, um, and the fact that there's an opt out, I, I, I like the idea of it. Any other questions on number 12? All right, no other questions. Uh, I know we've talked about the comprehensive plan, getting started on that. Um, discuss with city manager, I'd like for you to um, see if, um, our consultant is available for strategic meeting in February. 
Um, so, so let's say if he, well, yeah, let's say if he's available for March or April okay. to come and meet with us. Um, you know, just, I mean, it can be public, but it is primarily be meeting with the commission to give us some guidance on, you know, some of the highlights of what we need to look through as we're going through the comprehensive plan. So it gives some some idea for focus. So let's see if he's available for a date in March or or April, and then also um, I've gotten the city manager and and sort of created an, an order of us to go through the, the ordinances. And so we'll start that this second, the second meeting in January. Um, and so the way we've laid it out, um, seemingly we'll probably take a little while to get through it. However, we can actually get through the ordinances within about two to three years, based on if we're able to strategically work through this plan that we've created. And then we can actually go through all the ordinances um, within about a three year period. We're able to stay on task, so, um, so yeah. Which means we're gonna when we get them, have to dig through them quickly, and then bring back our ideas and try to see if there's any updates you know that we need to make. And we've had some citizens to make different requests about looking at specific ordinances as well. So letting them know that we want to cover those as we're going through this process. Um, You're gonna go like chapter by chapter through the code of ordinances. Yeah, because yeah. you know before we had talked about trying to do it from oldest to newest within some of it's been yeah I mean, revised. You think, I mean honestly most ordinances are <laughs> amending yeah a prior ordinance so right. it's better to go so that's what we're going to do yeah chapter start. by chapter now there's some out there that are not not codified so right. we, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually look through there's what 1100 or so to look through right. but yeah um you know there are some that are not codified so that it's a sort of standalone things but right. for the most part you're going to catch everything in your code of ordinance book, going chapter by chapter. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's the plan is to break down the chapters, go through chapter by chapter. Um, and we may get finished before, you know, finish the printer's turn is, uh, is, is done, hopefully. Um, we get finished before the end, right? Uh, but that's the plan is for us to work, work through all of those. So you can see that we've worked through all the ordinances, reviewed all of those, even those that have been updated or amended since. Um, you know, within the past two to three years, because they're in those chapters, when we get covered as well. So, um, so that's the plan for uh, for doing that, and we'll start that this next meeting in January. Um, second meeting in January, we'll start doing that. Um, so we need to be prepared to discuss the first chapter. Well, we'll we'll let you know which one to that we're going to discuss. Okay. So it'll be in the pre-meeting notes. So the parts of the ordinance that we we'll discuss, it'll be sent out to us so that we can have time to discuss it and be ready for it. Okay, well, I need more if we get it on Thursday and we discuss it on Friday. I'm a slow reader. Well, we'll try to get it to you before the end. Or let me say there's a calendar. So we actually have a calendar of what we're planning oh, to discuss. So great. we can see the calendar. Okay. Perfect. To discuss, you know, look at it at your leisure. Okay. Um, but there's a calendar created on this. is what we're going to discuss on these meetings. So we've already charted it out for the next two or three years um, as to what ordinances we're going to discuss at what times. So, excellent. And who's the consultant for the uh, comprehensive plan? His name is Dr. Chapping, and he's from FSU. He's a professor there, and he's come up before to meet with us um, and uh, chat about how we can uh, go through a comprehensive plan. He's looked over ours, so he's very familiar with that. All right. Any other questions, concerns? Yes. Uh, did you get? Oh, I'm sure you did. But that email about the guy asking about um, the Mill Bayou Reserve, the lights. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's going on with mm -hmm. that? Um, we did do the research on that. First of all, the lights that he was talking about that were removed were removed by the contractor. Mm -hmm. We sent the contractor a letter. We went back a couple of emails with him. He's going to get with Bobby and Chris. He's, he has to put those lights back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just part of the makeup of contractors, of putting those lights back. Um, <clears throat> the second thing, Bobby did do some research. We do not have an agreement with them to upkeep of their lights. I think when they were when that um, subdivision was built, they came to the city, wanted the city to make to, to maintain those lights, but the city um, was opposed to them buying the decorative lights that they they were buying. The upkeep of it is a little bit harder. They bought those lights anyway, and they put them up. And uh, the city also recommended that you not put them so close together 
they didn't take any of the recommendations. So the city uh, opted not to have maintenance on it. Yeah. And Bobby, you correct me if I'm wrong in it. Anyway. No, you're correct. Cool. Well, that leads me to Jamie called me. Uh, I know he wasn't going to be here to talk about that entrance at Moet Highlands. Sounds like a similar situation. There's a, there's a sign in the. Correct. It's city right away. Because <clears throat> that, when that plat was done, it was like the phase six plat or phase eight plat of the Moat Island. So it's the main at the entrance. And if you go in there, there's a long island. Not that long, but. There's a sign. <clears throat> there's an island, like a grass island, maybe landscaped or whatever. But that's, that's not set apart as common area. There's not an HOA in there. It's just that city right away. Now the city did not do that entrance sign. We did Somebody not hit that. it. I'm sure there's car insurance. Somebody's going to pay for it, but it's a matter of, you know, who do they pay and all that sort of stuff. I, I told Jamie, I said, if the city didn't put that sign no. up, but we're not maintaining that no. sign. No. We're not maintaining that, that island. You know, they don't really, we don't need to get involved necessarily, but they also at the same time don't have a homeowner's association. So it's like, you know, just talk to the, the insurance company who's, we did. Anyone do that and, and say just pay the yeah. sign company directly and have them do it. But but it is, that at least that is on the city right away technically. So talking about not having an agreement, we normally you know, would want some some something to allow people to put stuff on our a right away like a right away improvement agreement or something. If they're going to put a sign up there and do stuff like that, we, yeah, we need to know what's on our right of ways. But well, I think someone or the community, I'm not sure if they was, started it, out as an HOA ago, and then it dissolved. Yeah. Um, it was bought, so if someone has records that where mm -hmm. they, they bought that sign, then they can sh surely go to the insurance company. Yeah, and like the I said, city if, yeah. if we not, did an agreement, it yeah. would be, okay, yes, you can. That's we'll allow you to put that sign, and we'll allow you to maintain good. that island. The city's not going to do it. And I mean, so if we had an agreement, it would have put it all on them anyway, Absolutely. but there is no them anymore. It's just a group of individual owners that choose to maintain that. Yeah. So they're probably going to have to pass to have to get that sign back up. Yeah. Now, are there other communities that are, I guess, that, do we need to look through the various subdivisions to see? <coughs> For the most part, I mean, when you look at plats, I mean, it's, it's either common area or there's a signed easement or a signed parcel and it's not, you know, not on city, city right away. Mm -hmm. This is one like it doesn't even show it on the plat. Right. It just it just shows the you know, say it's a you know, sixty feet at the beginning and then it's a forty foot right away. So just a normal platted road that was dedicated to the city. Got it. So it's not even not even depicted on the plat. It's just when it was built they put in that, that little landscape area okay. and they put a sign on mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> you know, ideally that would have just been you know common area for that for an HOA, but there is no HOA. Correct. And even if um there were HOA for that one or uh, for Mill Bayou, uh, any type of anything that we would say we were going to maintain, there's usually an agreement that, that we will say, yes, we'll maintain the lights, we'll, we'll maintain the roads. We don't have agreements. All right. Any other questions, concern? Um, I have a couple. Um, I had a citizen call and ask if we have had any complaints about uh, Waste Pro, the commercial pickup. Do you know if we've had any complaints? Okay. They're fulfilling their contract? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, second thing is I would like to compliment whatever department was responsible for the decorations in the city. It was there, a team it's been effort. Out. I think it was a yeah um, marketing and tie and um, Joe's guys and just a little bit of everything. Would you pass that on, please? Because uh, yeah, they did a beautiful job. Yeah, it looked like the postcard. Yeah. The blue Very attractive. Um, I had a citizen call me and ask. He pays his water bill every month. And he opts for the additional dollar for the parks and recreation. But he would like to know how he can know that that dollar is going to the parks and recreation. So, is there a paper trail on that optional dollar? And, yes. And how, there is. how I, I, was, I was just going to get with you about it, yeah. but since we're going around the table. So, 
and I'll tell you who it is, and you, yeah. we can talk to her. Well, we can just get with Stephanie. Stephanie, you can, okay. yeah, she'll be able to talk to her. As long as we can yeah. follow that back up. And then, um, just from uh, running the course every day, mm -hmm. the, um, the removal of the stop signs in the public shopping center, it's kind of a Mr. Toad's ride over there. <laughs> um, some people stop still because the, where the stop sign was, there was a line on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And it still looks like it's a stop line on the pavement. So every second car or third car stops, and then one car just you know just goes. So it's it's a little scary that you you got stop and go traffic, not through traffic. And I don't know if it's a thing where it's got to run its course and take time or what, but it's just becoming it's becoming more of a. a, a problematic that somebody's going to run into somebody there. Could we add a sign that says just straight stop. through traffic? No, well, I don't know. Yes, when you come out of the public <laughs> in the south, it says um, stop through traffic. Yeah. Uh, when you come out of public. Yeah, go on toward the pizza place. That rather yeah, oh, where the stop sign. That's that's not a problem. It's in the public. It's where that three-way stop is coming into the place. So when you're going straight to the light at um at uh, 20, uh, 26th Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's there's still like it looks like a little gray yeah, line, stop. a white line. The people still stop there. They're so used to stopping there. Yeah. <laughs> It was. It was bad before. It needs a, needs a darn traffic circle or something. I, I don't know. I do think we need to. You know. Can, are we allowed to cover up that stop line in that parking lot? Yeah, we can black it out. Because if, like, I remember from years ago, whenever I took my, you know, driving test, it says stop sign or stop line to stop. So if people are like following by the book, they're supposed to stop because that line's there. It's just a little scary. So I think if we get rid of that line, that might help a little bit. At the freeway, because yeah, every third car is, yeah. Now, is it possible to put a sign where that stop sign was just to let them know to continue with, through traffic? Continuous traffic. But like, oh, is that yeah, like, like two so arrows, that's private like, parking lot. Go, go. But if yeah, it's yeah, private parking lot, we can't do anything. Dang. Because um, I do know what Commissioner Furner was talking about when I was leaving, I guess coming down, leaving Little Caesars, and I came there to cross over. Yeah. I knew the traffic was, was going through because we, we took the stop sign down. There's the person that was supposed to come through, they just stopped there. It's, it's like, okay. People just, coming in from the light have always had the straight through traffic. Yeah. 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 But it's the people, it's people leaving right the center, going mm -hmm. going back to the light. Yeah. It's yeah. just, ooh, it's just risky. Right. I go around. I go out by the sunny all the time. See the manager? Yeah. I just wanted to introduce those who have not met Daniel. Pete, he is uh, our new uh, finance director. And um, he is putting his feet down and head down trying to do catch up work. We have a great staff that's Welcome. helping him. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, um, one of the things that uh, I mentioned the city manager we, we talked about a little bit is uh, I guess when we get email, like a citizen email all of us, um, and not that all of us shouldn't respond and follow up, however usually we all f follow up or several of us follow up, but we have different responses. And so then by the time it gets to the city with our different responses, then they have to either tell the person no we can't do all the things that the commissioner said they could that, that they that y'all said that we could do and then now the city's in a predicament uh, or the staff because we're all city the staff then gets into this tug of war with you know well, hey this is what the commissioner said the staff is like well no we can't do this this is a protocol etc so um not that we have to wait on the city manager to respond first i mean obviously they're they're contacting us mayor's commissioners etc um but i guess just if we don't know, then maybe follow up with her first or defer that to her or um, I guess any ideas on how we can 
create less confusion with our citizens in our responses. Sometimes they email us and not city manager, so yeah. we should, as a courtesy, forward those emails to city manager. Okay. So that that should be a, that should be our protocol. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's uh, let's do that. That if we're all, I don't think she'd mind getting getting five emails and knowing that, that there's a yes. situation at hand. Yes. Because even sometimes they'll email all of us individually. Yeah. And, and we're not knowing that they've emailed everyone else because yeah. it's just you know Mayor Commissioner Peebles, and so we're thinking this is directly to me. And again, not that we should respond. Um, but then again, we have five different responses, yeah. uh, and then there's the, the actual response of what can or cannot happen. Um, so that's uh, you know, Commissioner Perno said if we get those emails, let's forward those to her um, or confer with her first before we respond. So you know, if someone gives you sends you an email, um, typically what I'll do is I'll send an email back. Hey, thanks for your email. Let me follow the city manager, and we'll have a response, right? And so I'll forward that to her, and then. Because it may take something off her plate for me to respond to it and engage with the citizen versus her having to always respond. But then I'll still have the answer from her as to this is what the response needs to be. Or she'll direct it to someone else on staff to send a response. And I can just forward that response, you know, to that citizen and say, OK, hey, this is from city manager and staff. This is what the response is for you know, this particular uh, particular thing. For example, like Mr. Montgomery, you know, he emailed all of us. And so I did respond back and say, hey. When's a good time to call you? You know, I'll follow with you. Uh, but that's all I said. You know, when's a good time to call you, follow with you? Hey, city manager, what's going on with this? And then when we call, we can say, this is this is what the protocol is. This is why we didn't do X, Y, Z. Um, and they still may not like it, you know, because I know we want to make people happy. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. And we want to actually not necessarily make them happy, but try to solve their problem. But some problems we can't solve or not the way they want them solved. So uh, I get that too. Um, so. Well, we have to be careful. We, this isn't a personal, I mean, we can't make personal decisions. Right. We're a group, we, you know, so yeah. it's easy to fall into that trap. And so I don't make any, I refer all to the city manager. And then I'll get back if she mm -hmm. asks me to. Or, yeah. But uh, it's an easy trap to fall into because you hear a lot of sob stories. You know, so. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, let's, you know, in 2024, just to have a little more unity and cohesiveness in our responses, just whatever we get individually or as a group, if you respond and say, I want to refer this to the city manager, that way they did get a response from us, but we're referring this to the city manager. and. Um, We'll follow up accordingly you know, after that. So, uh, anything else before we go? Uh, one last thing: Are we going to have an update this month on the stormwater? What's going on with the stormwater yes. assessment fee and all that? All right, cool. Not so much with the stormwater assessment, but everything that has happened, we we put off I think for the past two months, so that he could update you. I think at the end of this month. Okay. Storm. Have there been any Projects, issues? Yeah. Have there been any issues lately about stormwater? Because no one's contacted me yeah. about any yeah. issues. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were because last meeting that was when we had that you know that rain event and a lot of people were reaching out to me and I said, well, we're going to have projects update. We're yeah, going to have a projects awesome. update here soon. Yeah. So I just wanted yeah. to make sure that was happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be at the end of this month at a 530 meeting that way as many people correct right the team as possible you know sure. encourage all those that contacted you <laughs> to come out you know to attend because uh, with that following meeting we didn't i don't think anybody came to talk about storm water doing that that commission meeting actually um, as part of public commentary so um so yeah. right. anything else before we go all right